I'm here to talk a little bit about getting your carbon communication right. And in many parts, it's kind of like uh, telling a good ghost story. Because carbon is invisible, the ghost is invisible, but if told right, you can really engage people. And it's really urgent to get this right, because obviously we are in a climate emergency and all eyes are on you companies. The problem though is, how do we engage people? How do you make people understand how to live more carbon friendly? Because in fact, what does that even mean? How can I live more carbon friendly if I don't even know my carbon footprint? It's kind of like trying to lose weight, but without the scale. So that's one of the things you can do as a company is you can be that scale. And I truly believe that right now it's fundamentally the time to redefine your leadership. Because if you look at how most companies currently go about uh, their leadership, it's really saying, hey, look at us. We're doing all this good stuff for climate emission. We heard Elaine talk about 2,500 companies. So basically, you can't go down the supermarket aisles without every company is pitching itself as the climate hero. So then who to trust? Who the, to then actually believe are getting this right and authentically moving towards the goal because for the most part it looks a little bit like this and you can't really imagine a superman hero beginning with the world the, the the world is on fire and then supermarket uh, or superman sort of leans back and he says you know what i'm going to do something about it in 2030 2040 or 2050. that's not how that works and we know on the back of Glasgow and COP that people want action right now from companies and especially young people because the thing about young people if you think about it all they have experienced from companies in their lifetime is in fact companies to be blamed for environmental degradation and yet the language we hear from those same companies are look at us look at all the good stuff we're doing for climate so I'll advise you to step down from that hero's pedestal because people aren't buying your why or your values or your actions anymore, but it's really fundamentally about who you can help them become. And it's a different leadership. Moving away from the navel gazing, this is what we do, to actually saying, how can you help people towards living a more climate friendly life? And it's not an easy task. For the most part, getting communication right in this space and sorry about the language, it's a little bit like pissing in a wetsuit. In the beginning, it feels warm and nice, but it also quickly begins to stink. And that's exactly what we want to avoid here today. And often the world of marketing and sustainability clashes. It's almost like marketing is from Mars and sustainability is from Venus. So I'm gonna share a few tips on how to avoid that planetary collision. Because if you think about it, the world of sustainability is always very rational. It's about, you know, 185, uh, 184 grams per kilometer of, of carbon emission. But it's not something that people easily can relate to. But in the world of marketing, it needs to be emotional. You need to sort of feel it in your stomach like that little ghost story, right? So yes, maybe the world might not explode, but it's something that gets people to, uh, to act. Second, in the world of sustainability, nothing is just sort of black or white. It's always in the gray, it's extremely complex. But if you want people to do something about it and to be engaged, you need to make that story simple. And this is an example uh, from Hagen Dust. And basically, they want to tell people how there's not all these E ingredients in the ice cream. It's basically just made out of four simple ingredients. So, milk cream, sugar, and eggs. And the fifth ingredient, obviously, the one that makes the taste. So in this case, it's the lemon. So a very, very simple way of communicating that. Or let's take the world of sustainability again. Everything is about measurement. In this case, it's about Puma obviously putting uh, um, uh, a euro sign on the, uh, the carbon cost of actually producing this sneaker. But for most people, that might be a bit hard to understand. So in another case, this is a Belgian designer who actually created these sneakers that are 100% biodegradable and they even have like a little seed 
in the sole of the shoes, you can plant it and out blossoms this beautiful, beautiful tree. And again, informative, yes, you know, maybe we can save those 470 pounds a year if we stop all that food waste, but is that really enough to make people act? In the world of marketing, we do believe that it's not. We need to make it actionable. And this is a beautiful little story about how quite often we don't actually use this carrot because it doesn't uh, live up to our beauty ideals of what a carrot should look like. So this ad obviously asks this ugly carrot in a soup who really cares. So they turn in that into an emotional, exciting narrative. So maybe you want to ask yourself when you want to, want to enter this space, if you can make your communication emotional, simple, and actionable. And it's a tough, tough, tough balance to strike. But I'm going to give you a good example of a company who got this right. It's a fintech company out of Sweden, and they're called Duconomy. And they actually get that thing about the scale right as well, because what they do is they give you a carbon estimate of your credit card spending. So in that way, you can, in fact, change your behaviors towards a more corporate friendly way of living. And even if you don't, you know your, your credit card limit, but you can also, in this case, in fact, have a carbon emission limit. But this might not be enough, because young people today don't want to have a rhetoric about less bad. I think this is really about changing fundamentally the way that we label products and the way that we portray the world. Because quite often it's about more climate friendly or whatever type of friendly or maybe even more conscious. But I think the new normal is really not about labeling the good products, but maybe in fact labeling the products that aren't so good. So maybe it's about time that H&M, instead of the conscious collection, in fact launched the unconscious collection. And this again comes back obviously to the leadership, as I said in the introduction. Because as everybody is claiming to be a climate leader, who to trust and who to authentically believe. And this is not easy. But I'll advise you one thing, and that is not to stand up on the hero's pedestal and say, I'm a climate leader, but instead think about how you can turn each and every one of us into the climate leaders in our own life and help us live more climate friendly. Because as Elaine said as well, this is about scope three, the impact that I can have, that all of us can have in changing all of this. And this brings me back to the scale again to end this presentation. Because in fact, if you want to lose weight, I mean, your doctor can tell you, your children, uh, your loved one can tell you, but by the end of the day, the only one who can help you achieve that goal is yourself. So obviously, if you want to change the world, it has to begin with you. And that, I think, is the rallying cry to all of you out there, is to think about how you can turn each and every one of us into the climate heroes in our own lives.